Welcome to episode 17. Welcome back, guys. This is Misty. I'm with Pastor Glinda. Hey. And this is the I Want to Know Christian Podcast, where every single week we come in here and we take a question from the community of believers, and we do our best to answer it through the grace of God. Amen. Yes, yes. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just, again, always thank you for this opportunity. Yes, Jesus. We thank you for being, that you are operating through us to reach your children, Lord. Lord, we just pray that this message would not fall on deaf ears, that the people that need to hear it will hear it, and that it will, their eyes will be open, their ears will be open, and their understanding will be uh, improved and increased so that they can have deliverance and victory in their lives. And we just ask for all these things as always in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What's the topic this week, Pastor? What is the gift of discernment? Yes, we are starting. um, It won't be sequential like our other one was where we did three spiritual warfares in a row. But every so often we will add to our series on the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. So this week we are doing the gift of discernment. And we talked about this in our last podcast. Well, you know, there's two things that I'll list. You'll you'll see this re- uh, repeat throughout the a lot of times throughout the Bible. There is a discerning, and then there is a gift of discernment, yes. discerning of spirits. And so this we are all expected to be discerning, correct? Right. We're supposed to have an awareness of what is good and what is not and uh, you know to be operate to not be deceived yes by the plans and plots, plots of, the enemy, of the enemy evil schemes scams right and they are rampant now oh my gosh i can't get through oh my gosh a week without two or three a day exactly or more mm-hmm well, if you look at the, you know, I like to go to the Webster's 1828 sometimes where they actually used God in the uh, definitions yeah. of some of their terms. The uh, discern, to discern something means to distinguish one thing from another. Truth from a falsehood, uh, having an mm-hmm. acuteness of judgment, mm-hmm. uh, power at perceiving differences of things or ideas. So 1 Corinthians 12, 10, Paul talks about, this is the whole section where Paul goes over the gifts of the Spirit. But number 10, he specifically refers to uh, the gifts of discernment. And it actually says, to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. So that's what we're talking about today. The primary reason for the gift is not really to see as much what the enemy is doing, but to see what, what God is doing. Right. Amen. I mean, yes. Can we discern evil Recognize. and demonic plan, purpose to destroy the brothers and sisters of Christ? Yes. But we're also discerning and primarily supposed to be discerning where God is. Mm-hmm. What God is doing. I remember one time the Lord told me, do you not recognize and discern quickly what's of me and what's not? I mean, exactly. I heard that from the Lord. Exactly. And you sometimes have to quickly know. You know, you like you've talked about, Misty, you can be in a room sometimes and somebody walk in and almost immediately you sense a, a darkness has entered the room. You're discerning a spirit now. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Well, as far as who gets the gift of discernment, obviously that's something that God determines. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can also go to God in prayer and ask for it. Ask for it. You can ask for any of the gifts. It also walks hand in hand with the calling mm-hmm. that God has put on your life. And we did a podcast on what is God's will for my life. If you're called into certain roles in the church, then certain gifts will apply naturally yes, yes. in those roles. For example, the pro- a prophetic mm-hmm. person. 
uh, will often oh, operate in gifts of discernment. Yes. An, an apostolic person will often operate in gifts of discernment. Um, for, so f for me, this is probably one of the first gifts that I realized that I had, even from before. I was. It's hard to kind of describe it to me because I was that on-again, off-again believer, as I said last week. Right. But I knew that I had something going on. Right. And, and, that, and, you know, like you said, when you came back the last time and, and you literally realized you had truly come back, right. then you yielded to God. Mm -hmm. And now he was able to use you in that right. gift. So my foundational scripture for today uh, is First John 4. And now, it, there's a whole thing that you can read verse 1 through 21. I'm just going to read the first couple verses out of that. It says, Beloved, uh, do not believe every spirit, mm -mm. but test the spirits yes. to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the net, this part here is the most important. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming. Mm -hmm. And, and this is what I've got bolded on here because it really stuck out to me when I read it, is in the world already. Yes, he's here. So I'm not just talking about the physical embodiment of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. But the spirit of yes. Antichrist, which rises up against or the, and the belief in Jesus. And uh, that is... Antichrist. That is Antichrist. Yes. You know, a lot of people operate with a spirit of Antichrist on them. Yeah. Okay. And it's not always easily discerned. No. No, it's sure not. So let's talk about some of the evidences. Because, I mean, you may be saying right now, well, do I have the gift of discernment? And uh, so hopefully there, I've written down a few things here, and Mom can add in her own. Well, like I said, one would be sitting in the room like you have done and I have done, and instantly something happens when somebody walks in that room that you're discerning mm -hmm. it's not right. Something's not right here, and you immediately know, you know, something's not right. Yeah, I remember one time years and years ago, I was probably like late 20s, early 30s. I was sitting uh, somewhere out in public. It was like a public area where people were walking around back and forth. And I was, I think I was waiting on somebody. And uh, I was looking at something that I had with me, and all of a sudden I just looked up. And when I looked up, I saw a man walk directly in front of me. And it was like instantly I felt this heaviness. It's like a, like a dark um, sensation, you know, that, came, that I just felt like there was something wrong with that mm -hmm. person. Of course, you know, at that time, I didn't know as much as I know today. Right. And the, to recognize what that was. But... Especially early on, uh, you if you are exposed to demons operating on people, uh, the demonic spirits, actually in your area, you know, where you physically, um, a lot of times you'll have an, ad, like mom said, you'll have an adverse reaction to it because you'll feel like something is wrong. It's not, but it's, keep in mind that this is not all about demons either. There are other, other right. Aspects. The good, the good. I went to a Joyce Myers meeting one time, and uh, <laughs> I mean, I discerned immediately the spirit on her was a was a good spirit. It was good, mm -hmm. and she walked in front of me, and that spirit and that anointing on her almost knocked me down. Mm -hmm. I could feel it. I could literally feel it. For many, many years, I declared myself a non-denominational Christian because I would walk into churches and immediately discern that there was something not right. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, I would hang out for the service, leave, and never come back. Right. I didn't have anything uh, hard physical evidence. 
I just knew it wasn't right for whatever reason. So things like that. Well, walk into a room where a couple is sometimes, and you don't you don't know it, but they just had an argument. Mm -hmm. I mean, you discern something's wrong in a matter of minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, it I just mean, fills the atmosphere. The tension is there. Well, you feel you have it. to realize that we are operating in two yeah. worlds at the same time. Yeah. We are operating in the physical and the spiritual. spiritual. And as much activity is going on in the physical right now, there, there is, is just as much activity. If not more. <laughs> if not more going on in, in the, the spiritual. spiritual. So somebody who has a discerning of spirits is often feeling things that are operating in the spiritual. Right. Around them. Here are just like some characteristics. You have a desire to see people set free. Right. You have a really strong desire for that. To help them. Right. Um, you have a heightened awareness of God's presence. You know, certain people will say, oh, I, be I believe the Holy Spirit was operating in there today. There's a difference between saying that and, and saying knowing it. And knowing that it was. Yes. You know, I've been in places and I've turned to mom and I said, I feel the presence of God. Yeah. And then we've you been know? in churches that they were saying the Holy Spirit was there, but you didn't just didn't discern that the Holy yeah, Spirit wasn't there exactly. at all. Exactly, wasn't there at all. Um, you have a sensitivity to the spirit world, like I said. Uh, a lot of sometimes you'll have visions, dreams, and uh, sensations that uh, will alert you yeah. to what's happening in the spiritual realm. That's right. Oh. <laughs> and so I've had visions, I've had dreams. Yes. And you know the word says in these last days that'll be happening more mm -hmm. in God's people. You know, I don't claim to be prophetic. Mom is the prophet at the table. But I used to think when I would see, vi you know, visions or dream dreams that, well, am I operating in the prophetic? No, I'm operating in discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, the prophets do operate in discerning of spirits. But just because you can discern spirits, isn't, you could have a totally different calling than a prophet. You know what lies behind a person's words and actions. If somebody comes in and they're deceptive, you may discern that. Like I said, you may have pre-salvation signs, signs like I did. Now the problem with discerning of spirits in pre-salvation is a lot of times it, it's what leads people to the new age Mm -hmm. and like Wicca and stuff like that because you've been given this discerning of spirits from the Lord and then the enemy takes and perverts it yes into and you have to watch for that and I, I know for myself I was able to discern things when I had fallen away from God that I know were not of God it's like if somebody were to spread out a bunch of cards I could tell I could tell you which one was the one they were looking for. Stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, which is not of God. It's kind of like your border lining on like the fortune telling and tarot and stuff like that. Divination. Divination. Yeah. And that and that's really what this is. It's it's can be it gets perverted into divination. Yeah. Well, just like in the Bible when the the sorcerer was following Peter and Paul, I believe it was. Am I right on that, Misty? Mm. Which? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he wanted to buy the power that they had from God. Right. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> because they saw they operated in discerning the spirits and they had the power of God working in them. This sorcerer wanted to buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And see, that's where it really bothers me because so many people who are operating in witchcraft, yes, sorcery, and, you know, stuff, all that kind of stuff, it's because they've been given from God for their divine purpose a discerning of spirits. Because just if you consider when you're a divination is a divining of things, yeah, it's very similar. But very, di but very different. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of concept because you're divining yes. the spiritual the spirit. You're not getting it from the Holy Spirit. But you're not getting it ah. from the Holy Spirit. You're getting it from, from the devil. The, uh, yes, another spirit. <laughs> exactly. So if you're somebody who is a new believer, and that's something that you were involved in in the past, 
that may be a strong sign that you have a spirit of discernment that God has gifted you with. Mm -hmm. Praise God if you've gotten out of witchcraft and things like that. Yes. Because I know that's very big right now. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Yeah. Out there everywhere now. And the media and all the TV movies and stuff are pouring it on thick to get you to follow this stuff, you know, and believe in this stuff. And it's wrong. It's not of God at all. Well, you know, you and I used to disagree a lot back in the day <laughs> where I would didn't see the big deal about certain things. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares if I like to watch the TV show Charmed with the, the witches? It's just pretend. Yeah. And in my mind, it was just pretend. Mm -hmm. The problem isn't about what it's doing to me because it's not doing anything to me. Well... You know, it, it, may, it may have affected me in some way, but it's the people that it does affect yes. strongly. Yes. And it's it's directly put out by the agents of the enemy just to pull in people like that. Yeah, it's illusions. It's uh, to make you think you're this and you're not. Well, you know? I mean, how many fortune tellers are we sitting out there right now? that actually do operate in that type of thing, but they're operating in it for the devil, are people that were meant to be prophets of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. There's for everything that is of God, there is a perversion. There is a counterfeit. That is of the devil. Yes. Faith is of God. Fear is of the devil. devil. God can turn that around. For the, but God can turn that good. around. For the good. For absolute good. Yes. And you can be completely delivered and redeemed Yes, from from using those gifts the wrong way. to serve the to serve the devil. Yes, and the last thing is there's usually some form of confirmation. Of course, you can be somebody like mom who gets everybody everything confirmed to them left and right. You know, I don't. I've never been that lucky <laughs> to have somebody <laughs> walk up to me and say, "God has told me that you're a blah -de blah blah," but. Uh, it will be confirmed in the works yes. that come forward from it. What would you like to add, Mom? Well, I don't know, Miss Steve. We've pretty much covered it. I mean, you Well, know. I just ran my mouth the whole time. <laughs> you, you need to hey. step it up, girl. Well, I mean, the spirit of discernment is, is what it is. You discern it. Like we've said, you recognize it, and you need to recognize it quick. If it's of God or if it's not of God. Mm -hmm. And go with God. I don't care. Go with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, do you want to tell everybody about the Father's House online there, Mom? That yeah, are... Misty, you do a fine job. Did you hear this woman? <laughs> Always putting it on poor, poor, poor me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. She's my announcer. <laughs> you think? <laughs> She does a good job, doesn't she? Everybody clap out there. <laughs> that for Misty. She's doing a good yeah, job. Okay. All right. Is that like a golf clap? <laughs> yeah, a slow clap. Um, so, as we always say, if you don't have your own church and uh, you need iron to sharpen iron, you need somebody to talk to, questions, you need prayer, please visit our website, The Father's House, B O C. Dot com. It's in the comment section below. We are trying to work towards the Father's House Online, which will essentially give you access to everything that we have here at the church, and you don't even have to sit in the pews. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, we'll be able to hear our pastor, you'll be able to hear our worship, our teaching, and of course the podcast, I want to know. Um, and as all, this will is all will all be available to anybody that wants it. There's not going to be a charge to get in the door. Everybody is welcome. Yes, everybody is welcome. And just as you know, we are a brick and mortar church, nonprofit organization. So please feel free if you don't have anything. And if, if that's something that you're interested in, do me a favor right now and go into if you're listening on YouTube. Go in the comments below and um, just say, hey, that sounds like something I would be interested in. Kind of let us know how you feel about it. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Mom. <laughs> All right. Try to bring you notes next time, Mom. Uh, Mom, don't need notes. <laughs> 
It's, do you hear this? Oh my. <laughs> I can't go nowhere without my notes, honey child. I gotta have me some <laughs> notes. <laughs> Uh, my brain, I got too much on my brain. I need, I need to, you know, when God gives, I, I usually try to sit down before these things and jot notes down on what I hear the Lord say. And <laughs> if I don't have this, I'm a mess. <laughs> and that's not necessarily true, Misty. Sometimes I do bring little jots and of things I've wrote down. Yes, and... yes, but you know, <laughs> let's just call lazy what it is, no, Mom. No, that's it. God gives it to me. As, <laughs> as you start talking, suddenly I hear from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I know you do. Amen. All right, guys, be blessed this week. Yes. Jesus loves you. Yes. We love, we you. love you. Take care of yourselves. And Please. I will see you next week. Please apply this that you're hearing. Learn from it. Yes. And use it in your everyday life. Amen. Amen.